Hi, welcome back to another video feature of the Immersive Worlds Handbook. Today I'm taking you through a number of the pavilions here at World Expo 2015 in Milan. And I'll try to give you some indication of which pavilion I'm looking at and highlight some of the key features. So let's take a look at some of the most interesting pavilions here at the Expo in Milan. The first pavilion I'm looking at is Algeria. And keep in mind that Algeria is part of the Bio-Mediterranean Cluster and I'll be featuring this pavilion in more depth um, a bit later in that feature. But here's my commentary on Algeria. So this is certainly one of my uh, favorite pavilions. This is Algeria and maybe you can tell here that uh, they have pillows and so you can take a little respite here and uh, relax and it's one of those hot 90 degree days here in um, Milan so I, I this is I think one of my favorites because not only does it you know focus on just the human need for relaxation but it has this uh, cool video screen playing above and of course it's at the level um, at which you could view it if uh, you are lying down on these comfortable pillows. So, um, brilliant concept, I think, here inside of uh, Algeria. And here's just a hint, then, of that immersive video that you see above you in Algeria. And next is the Belarus Pavilion, whose theme is the Wheel of Life. And you can see here that the key feature of the pavilion was this amazing architectural wheel. It was one of those features that certainly could be seen from a distance and gave a clear sense of identity to the pavilion. And next is Bolivia. And you'll note that I also feature Bolivia in my cereals and tubers cluster video. But I thought it was worth taking a look at the pavilion here in this video as well. And as you might see, they take a very colorful approach to thematically orienting the guests within their pavilion space. I think it's also a great example of using a pavilion space that isn't necessarily that large to still make a great impression on the guest. And one of the things I enjoyed about the pavilion at Bolivia is that there were so many things that you could smell. And as you see here, touch and discover on your own. So a lot of appeals here to the sensory aspects of food and culture. And next on our tour is Egypt. And you'll note that Egypt is also featured in my video as part of the Bio-Mediterranean Cluster. For me, the highlight of Egypt was this very interesting approach to a virtual market. And the concept behind it was that you stepped in front of a camera and your image along with the image of other guests was projected upon this video screen which was displaying a historic market. So let me show you some of that video and how this appeared to the guest. So you can see the example here, and as you see, uh, a fairly simple technology, but a really effective one, I think, in terms of creating a crowd stopper, uh, something that the guest enjoyed looking at. And as we move along, we'll get to see 
uh, a little bit more of the pavilion, which ends here in a gift shop with various um, Egyptian uh, antiquities and other examples of material culture. Okay, now we're taking a look at Hungary's pavilion, and you see the inside here. It's a very unique structure. I'll show you these uh, chili peppers hanging from the ceiling. But I wanted to point out the outside feature, and this is from the Expo website. I didn't actually have an image of the uh, exterior. Again, they use a lot of renewable materials in creating this, and the two ends, the front and the back end, are made to resemble shamanic drums. And the entire structure, I read, was inspired by the symbolism of Noah's Ark as a form of life-giving and sustenance. You see the uh, chili peppers up here. And now, let me give you some on-site video commentary. Okay, so now let's take a look at um, Hungary's pavilion. I had read that 100% um, of the materials used in the pavilion are sustainable and recyclable. So it's part of that theme, certainly, of the expo that we've been talking about. And right here we have traditional craftspeople. And you see a lot of cultural expressions here. The expo. Okay, and we're having an opportunity to go back inside here and take a look. And one of the things you see is uh, there are some traditional folk life uh, celebrations throughout the pavilion in terms of the food customs, um, Hungarian uh, gingerbread and so forth on the left. Uh, so a lot to say certainly about the traditional expo traditions that are being brought back here in terms of focusing on folk life and issues of, of this sort. Again, the chili peppers as a key symbol are emphasized on the ceiling of the pavilion. And there you can see some of the uh, celebrations then of traditional folk life that we've seen for so many years in world exposition traditions. And now let's shift to the Indonesian pavilion that inside the Indonesian pavilion I was most reminded of traditional museums and this is certainly not a negative thing. You could see the signage here, the material culture that's presented. Guests have ample opportunities to look at uh, indigenous spices and food sources and to also, as I'll talk about later, view this giant map of Indonesia which also serves as a vessel for some of these forms of material culture that you can uh, interact with as a guest. Again, a lot of traditional sculpture and traditional artistic forms that we would expect to see in a museum space, and that's certainly preserved here. And one of the things you can see just behind me is they've, uh, here in Indonesia, they've created um, the archipelago here, the islands, and uh, allow people to uh, touch the, very, um, uh, the various indigenous grains and so forth. And now we're inside the Lithuania Pavilion, and you can see a very innovative and aesthetically pleasing visual design here. I was reading that the Pavilion of Lithuania is inspired by combining the old and the new, and has also focused on developing Lithuania's role in terms of its international relations with other nations and other cultures. And I think this is a very noble goal. One of the curious things about the World Expo tradition is to what extent one nation can communicate with another through forms of intercultural communication. And by taking this approach, I think Lithuania is, is clearly focusing on this idea of establishing connections with other cultures out there. You see that the pavilion actually is con consists of two cubes. My video is a little off here. I think the, the white and the, and the light is uh, affecting my camera. And just now we're exiting through a small gift shop. You could see the celebration of various forms of culture, also some food items as well. And next up is Mozambique. And recall that Mozambique is also featured in my video on the cereals and tubers cluster. And as part of this cluster, as a smaller pavilion, again, there are limitations in terms of what can be presented. But you can see a very colorful, informative, and thoughtful approach to presenting the cultures, people, and foodways of Mozambique. And for me, the highlight was this interactive board. 
and I'll show you some video of it right here. And now, let's take a look at the Pavilion of Monaco. And Monaco develops a number of important philosophical and political themes. And in particular, I was reading that the use of these freight containers is meant uh, in a twofold sense. One, to focus on cultural exchange, and two, on the idea of renewal. And you see these values also reflected here in the concept behind the pavilion, which I took from the Expo website, focusing on the values of cooperation, governance, and education, and certainly making many alignments with other organizations out there, such as the United Nations and also the World Wildlife Fund, in terms of their focus on abandoning bluefin tuna. And you see a few examples here inside the pavilion. Again, I think it goes without saying that by having this focus using these freight containers as part of its theme on the exterior, this establishes something very significant in terms of some of the messages that we read on the interior of the pavilion. And of course, like many of the other pavilions, full of interactive and technological exhibits for the guest. And now we'll have a look at the Pavilion of Poland. And you see the exterior of the pavilion here, and it's based on the idea of the simplicity and environmental uh, compatibility of apple crates. Inside we're going to see the Magical Garden, the Polish Market, a Pathway of Discovery, and an Apple installation. And right now you're seeing the garden as we're walking through. Perhaps in some ways taking a page from uh, France's pavilion in the Kew area and also of course Austria's amazing natural garden area, a very lush scene of vegetation. And now we're inside and you can see the dramatic effect of this apple crate on the inside here in this performance area. And now we're moving into some of the sections of the pavilion that feature video installations and interactive and immersive opportunities for the guest. And you can see some of these here. And a few more examples of some of the interactive technology. One of the more colorful video screens you'll see at the World Expo. And then some uh, miniature villages recreated here for the guest. And then near the end of the pavilion, you're seeing the overall layout. And in just a second here, I'll be commenting on a performance that I witnessed outside the pavilion of Poland. So uh, just behind me, you can see one of the cool things you get at the World Expo is uh, performance. You can see the uh, hip-hop dancing here at the Poland Pavilion. Um, at night, the Expo really comes alive and you see many other examples of performance that you might expect, you know, at a big uh, exposition like this. Now we're entering the Pavilion of Romania. And I thought I would read you this short take from the Expo guidebook of Romania's theme, which is living with nature. Romania offers visitors an overview of the country's characteristics, resources, and potentials, presenting the essence of Romanian spirit and illustrating the coexistence of biodiversity, agricultural potential, traditional practices, folklore, and hospitality. The primary message is that the country lives in harmony with nature, combining tradition with modernity and offering the world accessible, sustainable, and reliable resources while safeguarding biodiversity, ensuring food security and a healthy diet, 
promoting cultural values, and encouraging the use of clean energy. And you're seeing some of the video screens to the left here that are certainly uh, emphasizing this focus on harmony and connection with nature. We continue to move along here. There was a room with a, a traditional, uh, what appeared to be a traditional performance area, uh, which uh, wasn't uh, happening during my visit. So I think there was actually a lot more happening inside the pavilion at other times of the day. And you can see here the pavilion entrance. And you see, uh, certainly as we do in other expo pavilions, people wearing traditional garb that is uh, representative of the culture and the people. And that's, again, something that goes back uh, well over 100 years in terms of world expo traditions, presenting the uh, foundations, the essence of uh, a given culture. You can see the pavilion in some respects on the second floor is quite amazing. And this focus on nature, uh, sense of serenity, I think you almost get as you're walking around the outside here of the structure in what is created as a garden area for the guest. And next up is the Turkmenistan Pavilion. And day and night, the Turkmenistan Pavilion I found to be one of the most colorful and interesting pavilions to look at. And you may not note this just from looking at the image, but it's actually based on, the facade is based on a yurt, which is a traditional a dwelling structure. You can see here on the inside, I have just a short video to share with you, this uh, massive video feature. And then uh, on the in the corridors surrounding it, you get a lot of video installations and much information about the economy, um, information about culture, industry, industry, medicine, and technology, and the like. And you see the video screen again. And next up is Venezuela. Keep in mind that this pavilion is also featured in the Cereals and Tubers Clusters video as well. And like many of the pavilions at the Expo, there's a focus on a wide range of issues, sustainable agriculture being one of the big ones, but what was really key from an interactive standpoint was this interesting video screen that I'll be showing you some uh, images of here in a second. These two virtual dancers, and I thought this was somewhat of a hit of this uh, cluster area uh, in terms of this specific pavilion. People were, I think, really taken with the technology, uh, and there was also music as well, and it was a very uh, interactive and pleasing experience in terms of the technology being used as a central focal point for the pavilion here at Venezuela. And next up, we'll look at the pavilion of the Czech Republic. See that one of the key features here, which I think really distinguished this pavilion from many others, if not all others at the Expo, was this marvelous sculpture hybrid uh, creature in the front of the pavilion, and also this wading pool, which was uh, popular certainly with small children, as I'll show you in a second with a short video. One of the things I really enjoyed here is the top of the pavilion, and then inside was the focus on art. This was for me one of the most pleasing pavilions in terms of drawing in so much interesting art for the guests to consider. And you see the waiting pool here and now we're actually back inside with some live video looking at the interesting art installations that were to be found in the pavilion. And also some design experiments as you can see here. As we saw in uh, Slovakia's pavilion, QR codes are available to the guest. You can learn more about the uh, uh, properties, information about the art and the design. 
And as you can see here, some of this interior design allowed the guests to uh, interact with it. And you see guests here are marveling at many of the other uh, innovative technological structures, art forms that we find in the pavilion. And I have to say that unfortunately, I uh, missed out as I'm exiting here through the uh, restaurant area, I missed out on this innovative laboratory of science, which I encourage you to uh, discover on the web, but this is part of the pavilion that unfortunately I missed. I was unaware of it uh, being in the pavilion space. Now we'll have a look at the pavilion of Turkey. As you can see here, I'm standing in front of these recreated archeological structures, which as an anthropologist, I found to be quite interesting. And the structures are quite significant because the theme of the pavilion is digging into history for future food. And this focus on archaeology, specifically 12,000 years of, of human history, is represented uh, in the pavilion by the pomegranate. And one of the things I found interesting about it was its open structure. And although it was very hot during the hot days of the expo, I very much appreciated its openness and the fact that it was willing to interact with people and the other spaces within the expo structure. Not unlike Brazil's pavilion, which also focuses on openness and the sense of transparency in terms of its uh, being within the exposition space. And I would add, as we continue to see some of the images here, that this focus on the pomegranate, I think, is a key one. Um, it's not unlike some of the other pavilions that focus on one or more key agricultural products. Uh, we can be reminded of the UK and the honeybee. And in this case, uh, the idea of the pomegranate, which is very important in Turkish diet, has also important symbolic meanings, including fertility and abundance. And it's associated with many positive qualities that are found in numerous cultures and numerous religions. And again, we see the images here of archaeology and this theme of using the past to discover the future. And now we're viewing the, the pavilion of Moldova. The theme is shine the light, energy of sun, energy of earth, food for people. And according to the expo guide, since ancient times, the vast fields of Moldova have been successfully used to grow vines, fruit trees, and various kinds of vegetables and plants like tobacco thus making the region one of the major exporters of agricultural produce in Southeast Europe. The guide goes on to list some of the important crops and talks about the significance of certain local wines, all of which can be tasted in the pavilion. And one more image of the pavilion here, focusing on solar innovation and technology. And now let's take a look at the pavilion of Belgium. And Belgium's theme is Belgium's conviviality has a sustainable future. And many of the materials used in the pavilion are sustainable, are recycled, wood and glass and cutting edge green technologies have also been used in terms of insulation and water supply. And we're walking through here the first part of the pavilion. And there's a focus here on um, Belgian uh, chocolate and uh, some of the interesting chocolate sculpture. And you see some of it here. Quite intriguing, certainly. Some additional examples. And there was a, uh, a chocolate artisan, but not uh, during my visit. And additional forms of uh, jewelry and material culture uh, created to look like various forms of food. And we see a bit of a throwback here to the expo of the past. And a reminder of some of the problems that are facing the planet. A lot of emphasis here on new forms of hydroponic gardening and algae and other technologies that maybe could be used to create a more sustainable future. This I found to be quite intriguing. And then we see some of the really thoughtful and avant-garde 
food areas and bars that you'll discover just at the end of the pavilion. Some of the most interesting ones I saw during my entire time at the World Expo. And one more example here of a bar near the exit. And now let's take a brief look at the pavilion of Vietnam. And for me, the pavilion is most notable for its use of the iconic lotus, uh, which is a plant that grows in the mud and also has properties that purifies the water in which it thrives. And you can see here how dramatic this architectural feature is on the exterior of the pavilion. And here's a very short look inside to see some of the sites as well in the performance stage. And now we'll take a look at the Pavilion of Congo. And Congo is part of the Cereals and Tubers cluster, so you can see additional information there. And you see this very interesting floor that greets the visitor just as you enter. And as a small pavilion, it offers the guest a number of uh, interesting discussions of local culture, local wood, and other resources. And now we'll look at the Pavilion of the Vatican. And this is a very interesting pavilion for me. On the exterior, in various languages, uh, words related to give us our daily bread. And one of the curious things is that the Vatican decided to participate prior to Pope Francis becoming Pope. And one wonders whether there would have been participation given Pope Francis's concerns expressed at the opening of the expo. Basically, he stated that the expo does not offer any kind of vision for dealing with the true crises facing the world. And as you'll see throughout the space here, the emphasis is on feeding the poor, developing Christian values, and using religion and spirituality in such a way to deal with actual problems. And if you look at the statement given on the Vatican's website through the Expo website, there's focus on this idea that there's too much waste in the world and we have to come up with ways of feeding the planet. So as a political message, I think it's one of the strongest ones you'll see anywhere at the Expo in Milan. And now you're having an opportunity to see some of the video I shot, which shows you this giant table, highly interactive, interactive in the surface of the table, and then you see the video projections on the wall. I think conceptually, a really strong, symbolic approach to focusing on pressing issues like poverty and feeding those who are in need. So I would say a very smart choice and also as a central space for which people can gather, through which people can gather, I think it's also very effective in this perspective. And as you can see, the Vatican's pavilion is relatively small, but I think it's quite effective in terms of using this as the key feature, this interactive table. So you can see here inside uh, the Vatican's uh, pavilion here at the World Expo, um, you know, this emphasis that is uh, key at, at this year's Expo in terms of, you know, biodiversity sustainability. In this case, it's focused on um, feeding the poor, as you can see some, from some of the images here that are uh, just in front of this um, projection table. Oh, and there's the Pope. Current Pope. Pope Francis. I hope you enjoyed this video feature today, focusing on a number of the pavilions here at World Expo 2015 in Milan. Please come back for additional video features of the Immersive Worlds Handbook.